now time for the Mike Wagner Show. Powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show brings you famous celebrities and amazing people from all over the world. Listen online at themikewagnershow.com and on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. And watch the interview on YouTube. So sit back and relax and enjoy the Mike Wagner Show. Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today at 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show, get 10% off your first order. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike Wagner Show can be heard on the MikeWagnerShow.com. Also, check our Facebook page, Facebook.com slash the Mike Wagner Show. Also, download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio. Also, on Anchor FM and watch the interview on YouTube. You can also subscribe to the Mike Wagner Show on YouTube. You can also um, download the Mike Wagner Show on any mobile device and just take us with you wherever you go. Again, that's the Mike Wagner Show, MikeWagnerShow.com. We're here with a wonderful author from Santa Barbara, California. She's the author of a brand new book, My Random Death, published by Insight Institute Press. It was released on June 1st, available at MyRandomDeath.com and also other um, outlets as well, too. Just tells about a great story about what happened and what um, how it came about and just used everything possible. And, of course, we're not going to give it all away, so we're going to just, um, you know, just let this wonderful uh Lady, tell you about it. Um, she's um, now a federally criminal, um, federal criminal appeals attorney who's handled a number of cases and also um, handbook binder, paper store, martial artist, and a reader and teacher of Tara and Kabbalah. So without further ado, just uh, packing everything in and still getting some time to talk about a great book. Ladies and gentlemen, from beautiful Santa Barbara, California, Myra Mossman. Myra, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you very much for having me. I'm excited to be here with you. Great. Okay. So you're the author of the book, Man Random Death, published by Insight Institute Press, which was released on June 1st and available at MyRandomDeath.com and also on other available um, outlets as well, too. You can uh, talk about that. You've got on the um, website. You also got legal practice. You also do Tara and uh, Kabbalah, and and you got a great story to tell about the book. Uh, before we get into all that, uh, tell us how you got started. Well, it's my memoir. So it was, um, I didn't write the book out of vanity. I wanted to express uh, this real story that happened that has multiple layers of consciousness and a lot of uh, premonitions and unusual, uh, out of the ordinary aspects of our everyday world. And um, it there was a lot of spiritual directions after this incident i was left for dead and i gave up to death obviously i'm here and it was a transformational moment for me and so i'm here to talk about it that is amazing too and what was your motivation for uh, writing your memoir um there was asked it uh, i had an opportunity to write it because my practice i was taking a sabbatical from my federal criminal appeals practice. I have been doing it for 13 years and I had an opportunity to write. Um, and it took me four years to write this uh, memoir and now I'm marketing it. And I just wanted to express to people because the circumstances of the Me Too movement mm -hmm. was very timely. Uh, there was aspects of my story when I was left for dead and then I was um, taken to um, I was brought into a cottage and, and the police were called and I didn't know if they would be believed, if I would be believed. Mm -hmm. And this is an opportunity to talk about this now. And also I was given divine directives that I had to master. And it took me 40 years to master those directives and you listed them. Mm -hmm. and, and of course it was amazing too. You can talk about some of the uh, directives as well too. And how do they come about as well? Um, it actually came to me. I was in, I was left for dead. I, I came into conscious, back into consciousness, and then I found my way back to the cottage. My boyfriend at the time um, came out, of, out, out to, 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 
to meet me. He was, he, he had heard sounds. He didn't know if it was human or animal. And he met me on the path, on this pathway. He carried me into the cottage and he laid me down. He called the state troopers. And there was one that came to the, um, excuse me, the police on Martha's Vineyard Island. And one came to the cottage within five minutes. He interviewed me and then um, an ambulance came. And in the ambulance, I was given these five divine directives. Move to the, and it just came like a revelation. Mm -hmm. All at and, once. And, all and at what, once. Oh, okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Move to the other side of the continent. Learn a metaphysics, which a lot got me into the tarot. Learn about martial arts. Learn about meaningful coincident, coincidence and learn how to meditate. Uh, ten years later, I was given another direct divine directive to become a lawyer. And it took me 40 years to get, gain some mastery of all of these areas because I was an initiate initi at the beginning. I didn't know nothing about these areas of, pra mm -hmm. of, of discipline. Mm -hmm. That's amazing, too. Now, you, you talk about being skilled in martial art. And what did you study when it comes to martial arts? I was trained in karate, an Ishiryu, uh, Goshiryu style karate. And then I studied in Taekwondo for three years and I got my black belt in Taekwondo. And then I moved into um, more lethal styles. So Jiu Jitsu and Kuk Su Wan, where I trained in maybe six years of those. And so I, I trained for about 12 years total. I'm sorry, maybe nine years of the, of the Jiu Jitsu and Taekwondo and practicing. And so I, I practiced for about 12 years and trained, and now I train on my own. That is amazing, too. And we'll talk more about the uh, book as well, too, and um, your other experiences. You listen to the Mike Wagner Show at themikewagnershow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable, custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show. Get 10% off your first order. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike Wagner Show can be heard on the themikewagnershow.com. You can check our Facebook page, facebook.com slash the Mike Wagner Show. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Anchor FM, and subscribe to The Mike Wagner Show on YouTube. Watch the video and take The Mike Wagner Show with you on any mobile device. We're here with the author of the book, My Random Death by Myra Mossman, published by Insight Institute Press, which was released June 1st and available at myrandomdeath.com. And um, also, also, you talked about, um, you know, some of the things you take about the journey and everything else. And, um, you, you know, starting with like the... Um, the, the first directive, move to the other side of the continent, and maybe just a little bit of detail on how that happened and, um, you know, what kind of force was used about move to the other side of the continent. Well, I was in the hospital for four days, and then I healed. It took me about three weeks. And then me and my boyfriend, Victor, at, at, at that time he was my fiancé, and that was in 1978, and we're still friends to, to, to today. Mm -hmm. um, we just... Went to Martha's Vineyard, got the truck that we had left there, and drove to uh, California, straight across the United States, and then up from California into Vancouver. I have dual citizenship, and we I, we we settled in Vancouver. Uh, so I had uh, doing doing the move also involved giving up a job opportunity in Lawrence, Massachusetts. I felt it was, I was compelled to fulfill that divine directive right away. Mm. And so the reason why I was in Martha's Vineyard was because Vic's family has a cottage and a house there. And we stayed there for a vacation before I was going to a job interview in Lawrence, Massachusetts. Instead, I got killed. I got murdered. And so when I came back to life and healed, I didn't go to the job interview. I fulfilled that first divine directive and moved to the other side of the continent. And what and what was that uh, job for at that time? I was a, at the time I was a bookbinder, hand bookbinder and paper restorer, and it was at the New England Documentation Center. Mm. I was, it would have been fascinating because they would have held a lot of the very early documents of this country of the United States. Amazing. Yes. So, and, but I, I gave that up to fulfill that first directive. 
And 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 and, and was a part when it came to book binding. Was it like all about um, the thirteen counties, how um, New England came about, and everything? And maybe can you recall, like you know, what were some of the things that was like in those uh, books as well too that people didn't know about? Sounds like it's, fascinating history. Nobody knows. Well, it was it was actually a center, New England Documentation Center. So it's a building that houses a number of paper stores working on these documents and books and flat work. So just flat documents. Um, I I went back there years later and visited as a guest and visited the New England Documentation Center. I was very grateful for them. That is amazing, too. And, of course, I can imagine as well, too, you know, just preserving all this history as well, too. And, of course, you know, this just came up as well, too. When you were killed, you were going through this um this experience. And maybe, I don't know if you, a lot of people have this uh, sense that, you know, you know, after, you know, after you're dead, you go through this um motions and everything and all of a sudden you come back to life and people have described it vividly and uh what were some of the things you recall vividly during that time um i let go into death and be, prior to that moment i had been very lucid i had been number of premonitions so i was very lucid the man was strangling me straddling me and strangling me in the woods on martha's vineyard i got i was exhausted and i didn't at the time know how to fight him and i let go into death and an incredible peace came over me. Uh, prior, I was thinking, what is death? Where, wh what is God? Where is God? Where is Buddha? Where is Jesus? Where is Muhammad? Where are all the great gods? And I'm mm -hmm. in the I felt alone. But when I let go into death, I felt I was going to a place of no more fear, no more worry, no more doubt. And this incredible peace came over me. And then there was darkness. And I was, I had no concept of my body and then I heard a voice it was my voice and it was talking to my murderer you're not going to get away with this you're not going to get away with this and I believe that was part of the force that drew me back into life and I saw visions of white fire on black fire of squares and they it was almost like the opposite of a leg egg unfolding it was moving in geometric regression or arithmetic regression. So let's say a hundred of these squares were then imploding into 26 and then, sorry, 96 and then 92. And we became one shiny square in my mind's eye. The voice said, now. And I broke into everyday consciousness. I saw light. I heard the birds. I could smell the earth. And then I got afraid because I couldn't see him. I couldn't see my murderer, and I thought he, he, he will kill me again. I will, I won't be able to come back. I got fear entered me and doubt entered me. I thought the police aren't going to believe me. They're going to laugh at me. And like far, the farmer's daughter jumping out of the haystack in the far barnyard, half naked. These jokes were coming to my mind, although I wasn't laughing. I thought people would laugh at me. And this got, gets you right back into the Me Too movement, that mm -hmm. you're not going to be believed. Right. And they couldn't investigate. And they wouldn't find my murderer. And he would murder again. And so, thank you for asking. Wow, that was something. Now, if, if you were to uh, encounter the same person like today, what would you say to him right now? I would want to know why he left me for dead. I, I want to tell you something. One of the premonitions that I had the day before this incident, I was walking on a very in, uh, up these famous cliffs in Martha's Vineyard, and I saw this van, and we had just bought in a truck, Victor and me, and so I noticed this really shiny van, and next to it was this man. I just saw the back of him, just mm -hmm. the back of him, and I said, that's an evil man to Victor. Mm -hmm. The next day, that was the man, that was the van, that drove by me, and that was the man that attacked me. I sensed his evilness, and I would ask him what, what was in, what I speculated what he was doing. I speculated that he was a stalker, and he had been to the island purposely to find someone. But I was speculating, so I would ask him why did he attack me? Why did he leave me for dead? Mm -hmm. that, that sounds uh, amazing. That's I, I wouldn't say amazing, but it's just, it's something. I have to say that I'm a loss for words. And of course, you wonder why, 
you know, people would come out of random to do so. So, you know, I wanted to say something, Mike. He was married. He had a child. Wow. Yes, he was a family man. He and, was and, on the island with his brother. And and He's, that is and that is amazing. And did they ever say what was the motive behind this? Was it a random or something like well, psychologically went wrong? When the police invest, in, interview, interviewed me, I was very calm at the time because I was alive. And mm-hmm. the, the police officer came into the cottage and my but in the struggle with this evil man, my top came off, my bra came off. And so when I was lying on the, the couch, the police officer put his coat over me. And he said to me, why are you so calm? He was sort of upset. He says, most women that go through what you've been through are in such a state of shock. A man, they won't let a man near them. And so we can't even get the information. Why are you so calm? See, already he was suspicious of me. I thought he wouldn't believe me. So I didn't tell him about the premonitions. I didn't tell him I saw the evil man. Mm-hmm. And and so then they investigate. Then I wanted him to investigate this, and they don't. They they. There was conflicting information about his background. I lay this out in the memoir, my memoir, my random death. Um, there was they offered me no motive. He was held at the sexually dangerous institute. In Martha's in uh, Massachusetts, only for the specific reason because um, the judge at the time wanted to see if he was fit to stand trial. He was charged with attempted murder, attempted rape, and assault and battery, and they wanted to know if he was fit to stand trial. It's a determination that happens before you go to trial, just to see if he's going to understand the charges against him. And so he went to the sexually danger. He was sent to the sexually dangerous institute at Bridgewater. He was, it was usually, this is usually a two week determination. He was held for six months. I cannot, I can't get the records. I have no idea, but so I can speculate. And because of my legal background, I eventually became a criminal appeals attorney. I can speculate as to why they were evaluating him and some of his background. Wow, that is, a, that is something as well, too. We'll talk about your other um, definitive directors as well, too, and how led to this. You listen to The Mike Wagner Show at themikewagnershow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website with a break-in budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today at 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960 or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show. Get 10% off your first order. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to next level. Also, the Mike Wagner Show can be heard on the themikewagnershow.com. Also, check our Facebook page, facebook.com slash the Mike Wagner Show. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Anchor FM, also watch the interview on YouTube and subscribe to the Mike Wagner Show on YouTube. And also take the Mike Wagner Show with you on any mobile device. We're here with the author of My Random Death, Myra Mossman, who's got the book out right now, published by Insight Institute Press, which was released on June 1st, available at MyRandomDeath.com. And um, you know, before we get to the other definitives, uh, where else can they purchase the book? I think I forgot to ask that. You know what, Mike, you read my mind. I was actually just going to say that. It's amazing. You read my mind, Mike. <laughs> I was going to follow up and say you can get this on Amazon, at Barnes & Nobles. Um, uh, you can get this uh, other AB a- 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 books. There's other um, book. You can request it at your local bookstore. They can order it for you. So this is good, Mike. <laughs> you this know what? I, and, and I think that's part of the... Um... You know, div- definitive directive, and I think you know I-, I wasn't trying to read your mind that way, but you have another uh, skill. Maybe reading my mind can be like number seven or something. But the second one was learn to meditate. You can just uh, tell us about the uh, second uh, definitive directive. Uh, the meditation was a call to meditate to learn to understand layers of consciousness and to quiet the chattering mind, the mind that's the mind that talks about how it doesn't like ourselves and says bad things to us or or just the chattering mind that gossips or or and so we can get to what what the wisdom traditions call the we small voice in us 
that mm-hmm. it's the knowing voice, the, know, the voice of knowledge and intuition. And this intuition can really be a guiding force. And so if you're not in touch with that inner universe, your own inner universe, you might not hear that voice. Mm-hmm. And that voice can now, uh, the voice of intuition can marry the outer world of what's called meaningful coincidences, those non-casual circumstances. I was just going to get to that definitive, definitive as well, too, and you uh, cover that meaningful uh, coincidence, and I think you cover that. If you want to talk more about that, that's fine. And also the other one is becoming skilled at a martial art. You talked about that for a little bit, but what led you to um, Taekwondo and some of the other martial arts? Um, I was studying, I studied karate. Um, it was just convenient uh, for initially uh, because it, there was a very good school half a block from where I lived. And he, it, I liked the kicking aspects of it. And so when I had to train, change cities, I eventually left Vancouver and went to Ottawa to work at the Public Archives of Canada mm. doing book res, uh, paper restoration. Um, they didn't have this type of karate there. So I started working in Taekwondo because it's also a kicking, uh, you know, specialist in kicking. But right. then I wanted to learn more lethal styles, more street fighting, more actual and weapons. And so then I started working with uh, Jiu Jitsu in Harlem with Little John Davies and uh, Cook So Wan in uh, Toronto. Wow. So- wow, that's amazing. And of course, I was going to have to do some moves, but, um, you, you know, probably not right now. That'll be for another time. And um, also, the other definitive directive came 10 years later when you're called to be a lawyer. Just uh, tell us all about that. It was an interesting um, moment because I was teaching a martial arts fitness program and had some private clients. And just to boost that income from time to time, I worked as a temp service, as a receptionist or some office work, like just for two days or one day, every now and then. And so I had an opportunity, and it's particularly in the winter, because, excuse me, in the summer, a lot of people left the city. And so I had a job uh, for a temp job for a lawyer he was supposed to be out all day and his receptionist was supposed to be out. And he was a criminal attorney. He called me up and said, Myra, I'm coming back to the office. Uh, court got canceled all day. It was quite unusual. But the night before this incident, I was up at my friend's house. Like, so I was visiting a, a, a roommate, a, a housemate on, in the attic because I wanted to get some hash. In, mm. in Canada, I was smoking hash a little bit. Uh-huh. And um, she, while I was waiting for her, I noticed this book of affirmations and I picked it up. I stopped, I flipped through the page, closed my eyes and then opened it to one affirmation. It said, today is no ordinary today. You will make a decision. It's no, mm. it's, today you will make a decision. It's no ordinary decision. It's a type of decision that leads men into battles and nations are created. It's like, Wow. It was supposed to be a book of love affirmations. And so when the, the next morning or that morning when the um, attorney came back to the, his office and we started talking, we talked about a half hour at the reception's desk. And then he called me into his office. He says, Myra, have you ever thought of becoming a lawyer? I said, never. He says, I sit on the board of, of admissions at the University of Toronto. It's the best law school in Canada. I could get you in. So I remembered that affirmation and I said, this is the decision that I have to make. And so that day I decided to write it, write my LSATs mm-hmm. and start doing the process to go to law schools and start applying. And uh, of course I, I called him once my, once I had wrote the LSATs and my admissions were ready to go. Uh, I never heard from him and I got into law school on my own merits. I nice with his help that is very nice too and of course he also took some time off to um write the book as well too correct and i just want to say one thing he was i went to an i in my search for applications to law schools i found that university of windsor and university of detroit 
had a joint law degree program where I could get a law degree in Canada and a law degree in the United States. And I chose to go, you had to sp- take uh, extra courses and go through in the summer and get all your um, semesters had to be pre-approved courses and you had to do a, get a certain grade point average. But I decided that's what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And, 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 of course, you, and, and of course, being um, licensed in the U.S. and also in Canada, you know, through Detroit and Windsor, being a, a lawyer as well, too. How many lawyers that you know are, are dual um, when it, attorneys when it comes to Canadian and U.S. law? The ones in my class that graduated through the program, and it was a very successful program. At the time, it was the only one in North America. And it gave me... An, the interesting thing is that we could not cite to American law in, Britain, in, in Canada. It, it was not authoritative, except this one area in real estate law where the wife was considered chattel or, but we had, we could cite to British law, but American law had no authority. And so I thought that was interesting. Although you think this, there's similars, but they, you're looking at two different legal systems, particularly. Mm-hmm. And so it was very interesting. And, and what, what do you find the difference between like Canada law and U S law? Like say, you know, just pick a few things out, you know, what's easier, what's more difficult. Well, mind blowing and everything else, or like your case, you know, will will have been much more uh, difficult or much easier. Two things I would say at the time when I actually when I was working at the Public uh, Archives of Canada, um, we were not we didn't Canada didn't have its own constitution, mm-hmm. and so it, it was under the British North American Act. And when I was working at the Public Archives, the British North Pierre Trudeau, Justin Trudeau's father, who was Prime Minister at the time, brought that British North American Act. Canada. Uh-huh. And, and, and we were in the process of creating our own constitution. And so the legal system was very different. The, how you make legal arguments was different. You, don't make, you didn't make constitutional arguments in Canada. You made ultra veres or acting out of your head of authority. And so that was different. Another thing that was different was in the United States, it has a lot of its laws are codified. And they also have a lot of um, cliff notes to help students. In Canada, had none of those. None of the law. The only thing that was codified was maybe the penal code. Not the, Peanut code? <laughs> the penal code. The, the criminal code. Oh, penal code. I'm sorry. Yes. And, and so you had to look through all. There was no. Everything you had to look through case law. There was also no cliff notes. Nothing helped the students. So it was a little different. Mm-hmm. And, and, do, you, and do you think of Canada law? Do you think... Um, the, the 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 guy who uh, murdered you for dead, but you know, come back to hire. Do you think they would have um, tried him differently, like harshly or lenient, or how do you think that would have applied? That's an interesting question, Mike. That's a very interesting question. Um, I don't know. Maybe the plea bargaining system would have been different. I'm not sure. Uh, it happened in the state of Massachusetts, and actually the Commonwealth of Math- Massachusetts. So I don't know if they would have processed it differently. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm just wondering if how they would have applied the pre- gar- plea, bar- plea bargaining, maybe in that capacity. Because mm-hmm. he eventually ple- he, he pled guilty to the lesser offense, the assault and battery. Mm-hmm. That is amazing, too. I just love hearing about your, um, your stories and everything else. We'll talk about um, you know, how uh, meaningful coincidences um, you know, come into play and also uh, how people can achieve um, just harmony and peace you know, based on your experiences. You listen to the Mike Wagner Show at themikewagnershow.com. Powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today at 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show. Get 10% for your first order. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Also, The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on themikewagnershow.com. Also on Facebook at facebook.com slash themikewagnershow. Download and listen on SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, in YouTube as well, too. You can watch The Mike Wagner Show and subscribe. Also on Facebook and Anchor FM and take The Mike Wagner Show with you on any mobile device. We're here with uh, the author of um, My Random Death by Myra Mossman. That's um, out right now on June 1st, and she had mentioned... um, where you can get the book. And of course, you know, things are always coming together as well, too, like with meaningful coincidences where it just everything just comes together. So maybe you can just um, tell us a little bit about um, how everything just comes into play, according to your book. Well, this is the uh, 
part about the, where intuition actually comes into play so that you can notice when something is coincidental. So, so Carl Jung coined the term synchronicity and he took those coincidences to another level and he, it's about meaningful coincidences, these non-causal happenings that occur when that mirrors something going on in our inner view universe with something, an outer happening. And we have to pay attention to these because like I said before, they're guideposts into how we can better develop ourselves. And at a minimum, it will help us gain confidence in ourselves and by trusting our intuition and by noticing these occurrences. And that is very important to people too. Um, we live in a society where lack of self-esteem and lack of confidence can be one of the most detrimental and debilitating um, aspects of life. And so once we gain trust in ourselves and trust our intuition, that's where confidence is 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 the core of our confidence and we can draw from that. And I, I think that's important to to um, surviving today. Mm -hmm. and it, it, the first thing is to have the intuition, excuse me, the intention to do something, even if it's to find a way when you know no way. And trusting in our intuition will help us notice these coincidences. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people notice their, oh, uh, uh, um, their favorite number shows up. That's an easy time, easy way for them to relating to coincidences. But let's get deeper with it and ask why is it showing up now? Mm -hmm. And then the most synchronistic, meaningful coincidence can be totally transformational. Like what happened to me, it totally transformed my life. The coincidence of seeing the evil man the day before. Uh, there was a number of other instances that I talk about in the book. These transformational moments it means your whole life is altered from then on it's completely different and it's all associated by numbers as well too that is amazing well sometimes numbers is an easy way right like if you have a favorite number mike and it shows up mm -hmm. people can relate to that coincidence of that right yes but then there, there's deeper and more meaning more more important aspects to meaningful coincidences mm-hmm and of course, and of course, he talked about uh, synchronicity as well, too. Of course, I'm not referring to the police album, by the way, but how can people invite or increase synchronicity into their lives? Uh, one is noticing it. Two is um, so being conscious of their own intu intuitions when something arises and noticing if you if you just the quickening inside of you or if you get it. Uh, uh, an idea, if it just a flash in your mind, if it just lasts even for a second, pay attention. And if you're the type of person that is a visual person, you might want to draw the, write these out because then you'll start to notice the patterns in your life. And so the, the key is to be in touch with your internal universe and pay attention to what's going on around you. Don't always just be in your head, in your own internal dialogues and talking to yourself about what you think, how angry you are at your boyfriend because he said this and this and reliving old, old bad stories. So it's part of it's paying attention to being present moment. That is amazing, too. And of course, you know, you know, basically, after reading this book, what is the ultimate goal you want people to accomplish? I think it's to trust themselves, to learn to have confidence in themselves. And then the key that I found about death is that we're going to a place of no more fear, no more doubt, no more worry. And that's a beautiful place to be in. That's mm -hmm. an exciting time. And so, of course, death brings the loneliness of, of, of someone leaving your physicality, but the opportunity to be in that state of, I guess other cultures call it bliss. Uh -huh. I call it no more fear, no more doubt, no more worry. Mm -hmm. so now we're in a learning stage. We're excited. Mm -hmm. that, that is amazing as well, too. And uh, who do you consider your uh, mentors or guides when it comes to writing this book? One of my guides was, um, although he was fiction, was Raymond Chandler. Uh -huh. uh, I, I read a lot of his books to get my frame. And although my book is a memoir, it's true. I wanted it to tell it in a storytelling fashion. And I, I, like, I like film noir. That's my genre in movies. Mm. And so I used um, 
but Chandler as a muse. And I also use Eliana Fer Ferrante, although I really didn't like her story, I liked her ability to get in touch with her emotions and to express that. And she gave me the freedom to not be afraid, mm -hmm. to share some of the dark sides. And that was key, I think, to writing so that people can relate. That is amazing, too. And you talked about film noir. And uh, what are some of your favorite films that you uh, watched as well in that genre? Well, in the genre is, um, I've, I've watched all of them. And so I don't, I, my favorite movie actually isn't in the film noir genre. It's, it's like a film noir. It's uh, Hitchcock's um, Rear Window. Mm. I've seen it, although it's in color. I've seen it like over 30 times and as recently as in June. And the other ones is um, Anatomy of a Murder, um, 30, 39 Steps, a uh, number of Hitchcock's black and whites that he did, even his earlier ones, Murder. I got lots of film noir favorites. <laughs> it's okay. You can take your time as well, too. And of course, you know, you had your own unique writing style. And uh, who do you consider your uh, favorite writers as well? I guess Arthur Cannon Doyle, because I'm a big Sherlock Holmes fan. I, I, though it's a bit wordy and a little bit, um, you know, um, cumbersome these days, I like Holmes. I actually, he's a mentor to me. And I, you know, I read a lot of nonfiction, so um, and case law, so just being clear, being concise, trying to express myself. And I don't, I don't like authors that are uh, too detailed into things that are really not relevant or important. Uh huh. Pay attention to people that are more concise. That is amazing. Add something to keep in mind, too. And, of course, just a couple more minutes. We know you're very busy. You've just been fast, fantastic, Vian Myra. And uh, who do you cons we talked about your biggest influence, and what's the best advice you can give the aim by at this point? Um, don't believe the bad things that you're saying to yourself. The words that we say to, to ourselves can be so make the world so difficult. Try to learn to trust and love yourself. And it's not the goal. It's the process. Just love the way you're getting to where you want to be. Enjoy the day every day and the little things. Make the little, make every day a little, a little goal in, in, in completing something. But it's the process that matters. I've, I've, ha I've had a lot of teachers. I've had a lot of, I've done a lot of things. But it's, it's, the, it's being involved with, um, you know, doing the best you can, having your integrity. And I live in a world of no excuses. It's a lot about discipline. You that cannot, is amazing. You cannot be a procrastinator. That is amazing, too. And of course, you know, procrastination, you can't do it uh, tomorrow, the next day as well. So I know how it goes. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> okay, great. I just want to say, Myra, it's been uh, great talking to you. Thank you very much for your time. Once again, uh, just tell us about your uh, book, author of the, um, the, the once again, uh, My Random Death by Myra Mossman, published by Insight Institute Press. It's been released June 1st. And uh, tell everybody, uh, where can they find the book at? Well, you could find it on the web. The website will link you to Amazon and Barnes and Nobles. It's My Random Death. It's my memoir, released June 1st. And you can also call your local bookstore. They'll order it for you. Uh, you can get it at AB Books. Uh, th there's ebook. Up, there's also an ebook available. You can get it on Kindle. And so um, Barnes and other people have other ebooks available. We're selling it in Britain and everywhere in Europe, and it's a global distribution. So you, it shouldn't be hard to find. Okay, that's great, too. And also, what's your website and how do people contact you? It's myrandomdeath.com. And you can go on there and you can, if you want to send me an email, Myra Mossman at myrandomdeath.com. You can send me an email as well. And we'd love to hear from you. And thank you very much for this opportunity, Mike, and all the great questions. All right. Thank you very much, Myra, as well, too. And uh, looking forward to having you on again soon. And uh, definitely keep us up to date. Look forward to having you on again. You've been fantastic. Thank you so much, Mike. Bye-bye. You too.
Thanks for listening to the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Listen online at themikewagnershow.com and on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. And watch the interview on YouTube. Also, become a sponsor of the program and or donate today at themikewagnershow.com. Join us again tomorrow for another episode of the Mike Wagner Show. Bye-bye.